welcome to your weekly interval. This is the Best Damn Nerd Show. I am your host, microphone alchemist James Kincaid. With me tonight, top billing, only billing, Professor Chris Davis. You're Mobius. I will forever ever wow. be by your side through yeah. all time yeah because we're time. like friends we're friends now and like you know we like you earn so much we trust by by betraying me in the second episode and then you know all of a sudden we're hugging it out like two episodes in a row and we're doing the legolas and gimli thing completely yeah. unearned uh i will say one of my favorite segments of this rebooted best damn nerd show, which is going to be a topic later on in the episode is discussing or was discussing rather episode five of Loki and just pummeling you left and right over the head with how bad this show is. And that set the stage for the finale. You know, I, re- I re-listened to it and I realized that it's just a lot of hot air coming my way and there's <laughs> well it's there's a podcast not a, davis there's not a, not a lot of substance and i'd say that's like loki but that's not true it's kind it of the absolutely is. the what and what and, i was viewing at you were verbatim quotes from the show that you couldn't defend because they were so good that you don't it need pl- to defend them well, if they're good they speak for themselves a, no you had nothing and nothing but that that little whiskey in your hand to console yourself <laughs> It was tequila. Speak your mind, but at least speak the truth. (laughs) Whatever. Uh, Anyway, so we, of course, set the stage to review the season finale of Loki for all time. Always the sixth episode uh, in this season, the final episode in season one. There will be a season two, unfortunately. Uh, that was spoiler! revealed. Sorry, spoiler. Oh yeah. By by the way, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Uh, by the way, yes. Uh, spoiler. Nobody it, cares. We're talking Loki. So if you haven't watched it yet, uh, and you, you know, please pause your Zunes or other non-name brand MP3 playing devices now, because we're going to be getting in to the season finale of Loki. Davis. Your overall thoughts on the season finale, and I'm, I'm going to do my best to, to holster my mouth here and let you speak for, you know, those fans of the MCU that, that you know, have been enjoying this. Good, because there's a lot of I've us. heard enough. There's, <laughs> there's so many of us. It's overwhelming at this point. Uh, there's a re- good Reddit channel. You should go on it. Uh, or, you know, go on our Discord, bestdamnerdshow.com. Slash Discord to uh, There's much more real talk, conversation going all on. Positive low key vibes. Not as a we chance. Do. Not a chance, uh, bitch. No, so this, I love the start of this episode because we have it really builds up kind of the ending, actually, uh, is where you're getting all of these just quotes from the MCU in the past, <laughs> you know, 14, 12, 14 years. Dance off, bro. It's my yeah, friend sure. from work. <laughs> it's my friend from work. Uh, some good, some not so good. But you remember where they're from, and that's the point. Uh, but mm. I, 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 I love how they kind of incorporated all of that because it, it was needed. Because right? this is this is the send off into the next big bad, which uh, can actually probably Emphasis be emphasis on bad. <laughs> can probably be just said for the show in general this this was like um uh, gosh a, a cucumber a sliced cucumber with goat cheese or cheese on it that you really just want the cheese but you need a little something to to eat it with you need, you need, a little you need bit of flavor excuse to put it in your mouth you need right. that crunch. Need that crunch. Right. <laughs> like it's so good, I, and you I still love the cucumber. You still love the cucumber. But I don't the love money the money shot. The money shot is the cheese here, and that's what we Listen, got, folks. After last week, <laughs> this is what he's bringing to the table: fucking cucumber yeah. sandwiches. <laughs> cucumber sandwich. Who doesn't love a cucumber sammy? God. You know, and that's what the show is. And, and I use cucumber for the green, obviously. So it's uh, no, it, it, this was really I see what they were doing here and I I loved it. It, it. I love the show even more now, James, because of episode six, I'm the finale. And because what we got was uh, Kang the Immortus 
if you're familiar with that, because I barely am. I had to do some research before tonight. Uh, mm. That's and... the marking of a good show right there. <laughs> hey, no, you got to be able to introduce characters to bring people in, and then people are going to research. Sure, sure. I'm, uh, I'm not, we're, like yeah. we're getting Kang, and that's yeah. our new big bad. And that's we the, are... that, that's the big that's the big thing here is that we now have <laughs> so much to go on, and there there is some problems with it which we can touch on, but there is now a perfect reason, absolutely amazing reason to bring in the X-Men, to bring in Deadpool, to bring in the Fantastic Four. This did it so well that I, I, I'm really amazed by how they did this because it, it makes perfect sense. And I, I was very curious how they were going to do it. And uh, this just allows for these other universes that <laughs> should have been in there from the beginning, but because of business and how everything works, it couldn't be. And they've adapted. And I I want to know what Anne's thinking these days over at DC. Uh, because guess what? Marvel likes money and they know what they're doing. Yeah, I, I would actually argue that DC is missing a golden opportunity to capitalize on when Marvel is at their most vulnerable. Uh, be, because, I mean, we're, they, we we're essentially going through a, a line change right now, a, a shift, a changing of the guard with, with things, you know, and there, there are a lot of fans out there. I, I do not stand alone, but, you know, the yeah. fact that we are we're down a Captain America. We're down an Iron Man, uh, you, you know, and, and other characters that could be stepping away. Uh, rumors that Peter Parker might not be long to be Spider-Man and, and, and things of that nature. Definitely a, a shift in who the major players are in, in the MCU and in these movies. And so there is an opportunity for, for DC. You know, perhaps, you know, we're down Thor. Uh, you know, I think Chris Hemsworth's probably going to be moving on from that role. Uh and so I think that there, <laughs> there would have been or would be an opportunity for DC to capitalize, but they can't really get their stuff together uh, over there. So there, there's, a, there's a missed opportunity. I, I will say this, that yes, this show is definitely a mechanism big time on where Marvel is going for the next several years in their films. I don't like the delivery or or the the apparatus and how how they did it. I think was painfully stupid, uh, poorly written, tedious to watch, unfulfilling, and uh, yeah, it's just a big disappointment. This this show held a lot of promise for me, and uh, but but I do agree with you that at the very least. This is where the MCU is going. It's going to, if for better or worse, th this is where it's taking us, is from this show. It's like the Scarecrow in Dark Knight. You know, I said it would take you places. I never said it would be places you wanted to go. And, God, and Scarecrow was so good. And that's, and that's where we're at right now uh, with this. And, and then, uh, go ahead. You're, you're worried about Captain America, Thor. And I'm yes, not worried. Not, I, what I, 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 I am a you, I am you like want them Ken, to be I'm Ben Wananabe in his inception. I'm an old man filled with regret, waiting to die alone. <laughs> it's wishing that it, I hadn't watched anything it, past Endgame. That's why this move is so picture perfect, though, because if they see something going off the rails just a little bit, they have all the reason now sure. to bring somebody in. They could save it like that. It a little snap, it, a little snap with the snap, and <laughs> and that you couldn't do that with Thanos Infinity War Endgame. Sure, he could. You sure yeah, he could. Bit. He has yeah, the you reality. Could, you, 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 you could with You could with the so, yeah. Sorry that that's a paperweight in your world, fuckface. <laughs> but in mine, they still have meaning. <laughs> but the, well, now that you, I mean, that's where we're kind of at, though, is where this is actually bad. And I will say that is that now we're getting into comic book realm is deeply. Whereas I, 
there is very it's very hard pressed now to i think we're and I'm, we're going to talk about this with black widow later is that it's hard to feel anything now there's not a whole lot of weight because it, it, people can come back anytime there's going to be multiverses people are it, it, there's no, death means nothing sure and, okay okay yeah i'll go i'll go with that and they did that in this show immediately with mobius and loki and then they tried to act like that the emotion was was earned when they're hugging it out and when they're calling each other friends and then in this episode with the kiss which we'll get to in a few minutes and and loki just being a sad panda like n- none of that emotion is earned, but th- listen, the, the the MCU didn't need a a time stream break to to render death meaningless, and comic books hasn't needed a, a timeline break to render death meaningless. I mean, I mean that that's that's throughout the history of comic books. That's why there's that phrase, you know, right. nobody stays dead in comics. So yeah. Gwen Stacy, Uncle Ben, you know. Bucky, all, the, all those folks, you know, all three of those have been broken at this point uh, in, in various fashions. But so, I mean, but in the MCU, look at look at the Avengers. I mean, Agent Coulson, uh, Davis is getting in and out delivered, uh, but uh, Ag- Agent Ooh, Coulson, right. yeah, A- Agent Coulson in, in the Avengers. I mean, they undid that immediately in Agents of Shit. So they didn't need this excuse to do that. I do no. get I do understand your point that they can retcon anything away with, with this timeline stuff now. And, you know, that's that, if you don't think that by the end of this next phase or phases isn't going to be a massive crutch for the MCU. You know, I, I mean, I, 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 I just got to believe that they they're going to lean story on, on that. They're going to lean on this hard because it's there's so much that they can do now with their stories. I don't think they want this phase to last long from what I've read, from what I've heard from Kevin Feige. Uh, it's just because it, he does, he did say that he wants it to be a little bit more quicker than how Thanos came along. I I just don't buy it though, because there's so much opportunity for them to do so much in, in this phase because Anything is possible. They can do the what ifs, uh, the anything because there's it's a it's a multiverse. You, yeah, you could say it it belongs here, it belongs there. There's no canon. There's canon in each multiverse, but there's what not a terrifying really terrifying thought. Yeah, no, it, it it is a little bit, and it's it's worrisome because that I I just don't know how much weight these movies are going to hold moving forward. I, I yeah, I think in the propensity for for fanfic style writing, I think it is more dangerous now with going into something like this. Uh, I, I think the the leaning heavily into you know per, people's pet project or pet characters that were you know you know a couple of throwaway panels like back cow or something like that and i know that's dc or for me my my unabashed love for uh Patruck the leaper uh it, you know god forbid they give him his own movie like what if Patruck became captain france or something no. you, you know so i'm just I'm actually you know now that i think about it yeah. i got a script for kevin feige uh no uh so yeah th- th- that is worrisome but this this episode itself to me was a <sighs> I don't know if I could say it's a massive letdown because the whole season was, but I, I guess an expected letdown <laughs> was this episode. And I want to start with Kang because what a massive, just underwhelming portrayal that was. That's your Kang. The guy just prancing around like a ninny the whole episode. No, thank you. Uh, 100% disagree. Uh, it, I think... Well, one, he, I do think, uh, what's his name? Majors? Jonathan Majors, I believe. Jonathan Majors, thank you. Um, I, the I, canceled I, I do, Lovecraft Country fan. Yeah. Not, not yeah. a fan of that show, but I do think yeah. he's a good, I do think he is a, a very good he actor. Was, he, was, he was the best part of the lipstick on that pig, for sure. <laughs> and I, I think Marvel has a diamond before it's been found here. 
because he is a very good actor and he hasn't won that many awards yet or any. And I think going to, um, well, this quick but, tank portrayal ain't going to get him for him. Let me I, tell you. Well, I, I think he just has a wide array of acting that he could portray. And with what they're doing with this Kang, I think he's going to be all these different versions. And what they portrayed in this one was a Kang that was middle of the road Kang. He wasn't mm-hmm. super evil. He wasn't super good. He had to do a lot of bad and some good to be where he is. And he's been there for thousands of years, if a millennia. Um, I don't know how long, because they didn't say, but if you're going by the comic books, he's been there for 7,000 years. And if that's the case, or even longer, shorter, it doesn't matter. You've been alone for that long. You've been, you've been conquering. You've been the ruler for that long you've been alone and guess what i'm tired of it i'm bored i'm going a little bit cuckoo yeah what 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 a terrible reason for abdicating i'm bored that's what no why why i'm over it because this is the finale of the season and this is the big bad that we've been chasing the entire season davis it's just i'm bored you guys do it and he's just laughing and giggling and eating an apple. Because it's something that he doesn't know. Loki is the difference of the timeline. This is the, the difference maker that he doesn't know what's going to happen now. Yeah, I, and, I, yeah, I, I could follow along. I'm telling yeah, you that, yeah. <laughs> that, that, he, that his reasoning for being like that he's tired of it and that he's, that he's getting too old for this shit doesn't hold any water in terms of a compelling narrative of your season finale for your fucking show. This is the variant of Kang that you're choosing to give us. Is, is this one that that's bored with doing anything and lets Karen Loki straight up stab him. That, that's what you're going to do in your season finale. But this has been done. It's been done again and again. Karen's been doing. Karen Sylvie's been doing this, and yeah, this I, is now a new Kang. And yes, it's one of this is the one of this cycle that's happening. And I, I think this Kang makes a lot of sense to me. And what, but what we're going to get is going to be more evil, more conqueror. Sure. And it's not going to be what we just saw. It's going to be very different. And I hope everybody understands that. That that's not that's not how Kang's going to be. He's going to be ph- philosophical, but it's he's going to be a bad bad man. Uh, yeah, I I understand that the the Kangs that we are going to get. In, in future iterations are going to be much more malevolent and everything like that. But he's still the big bad of, of this show of, of this season. He even says, we're all villains here. Yep. Uh, they should be. <laughs> they are. They're not treated like it. Uh, I, I just, I, I can't get behind the portrayal. It was way too goofy, way too hokey for me. I, I, I understand the, the sort of desire that, uh, you know, maybe this was the best possible Kang that we could have gotten, you know, managing the timelines or whatever, or certainly one of the, the better versions, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But still for an introduction of what will be the next uh, Thanos of, of the MCU, uh, incredibly underwhelming and it, it, very disappointing. But he did give me the mantra of this episode and this show in general, when he says, not what you were expecting. Don't tell me I'm a disappointment. Perfect. You absolutely are. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's just, it's almost it, like they knew, or he certainly know. Cause he's seen it all. Everything up until five minutes of Karen, Loki and Loki appearing. It's such a different take on a big bad though. Like if this is what we're getting, it's like, you know, we, we were built up on Thanos for a decade and it was menacing. It was, and it was power, thoughtful power where this is more, I feel like philosophical strategy power, I guess. And so it's just different. And I, I, I think, I mean, when, when those scenes happen with Kang, I was 
I was very worried for people. Like I was actually worried for the MCU. Like oh. that I cuz cuz of how how much he knows, how much he can do, how much his alternate his variants are going to do and how much they're going to have to go through to to defeat him moving forward. Uh, I it didn't seem like he was worried about it a bit. You know, it's just going to happen again. I'll get here. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I didn't get any menace or any any of that, really. And that and that's a problem for me, especially when you have uh, Sad Panda Loki going going back to whatever alternate timeline he was sent to and and shrieking about how terrifying that this person was uh, when there, there was there was no terror at all in his portrayal. I also hated how he looked, too. It just was completely. Nah, I don't know. Did I think I mean it was it was definitely off his Immortus look. I will uh, I will give them that they went pretty close to that. Um, but with Loki, I I think that holds weight though because of how terrified he is of somebody and what we know of Loki. Um, I don't think it means that much of who he's talking to and who he's telling, but of just that he is responding that way. He knows that he was not lying. He knows that that wasn't. A show like the, this, is was, gonna, this is yeah, this he, is gonna he, this is gonna he, be bad. He recognized the the confidence because as somebody that sort of made, has careered on lying and bluffing and tricking, that he right. realized that person was speaking the truth. I I, I get that it would be it would have been carried more weight if the Loki we actually got in this show was that Loki that had sort of careered on being you know a, a trickster tactician and able to plan and and lie and bluff. But that's not the Loki we got in this show uh, at all. So that doesn't that doesn't really hold hold water there. But I, but you know I I get what you're what you're saying um and then we got like the oh my god tim burton plan of the apes ending with the statue and you know whatever (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i i I love that and because you know how much i love the original plan of the apes it's yeah the original uh, original homage for sure (laughs) um Hey, what about the 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 Mark the Marky Mark the? That's why I the said the Tim Burton one. That's that's no, why that... I inv- that's why I invoked that one. <laughs> the Abe Ape Lincoln. Uh, yeah, no, it's just like that. Uh, no. <laughs> it it was great. Uh, that was definitely a nice little homage to that. And but th- that felt menacing too. Like I was like, yeah, okay, Ooh, okay, we're we're getting a little something here. There's a nice little tease for what's coming. Kang Conqueror is coming, so. I hope I hope he I hope he's better than the Kang we got in this show. We he will be. I have no doubt with that. It's just I I think there was no I I I think he was playing a character um, a variant of that that has been tired (laughs) of everything. He's done. He he conquered everything. He did what he needed to do. It's just such a weak season finale. I. I don't God, especially, especially with, <laughs> with just everything that, that we have and, wasted with this show. And I think I think it's mostly I feel that way so heavily because of how much it means now for the next 10 years of movies, probably. God, what a terrifying. See, now now that is terrifying. Menacing, isn't it? <laughs> that's that's horrifying to think that we're going to have to deal with this shit for 10 years. I, I think we got five. I think they'll go five years with this phase. Yeah. They I won't mean, go as long. They, they'll need to push something else. They're going to go quick. And I, I think they're gonna be going to realize also that, um, that they're kind of banking on characters right now that aren't hitting and so they might need to move it along a little bit quicker than what they're currently planning i i mean i i was in the announcements before before the disney plus shows hit i was very excited for doctor strange and the multiverse of madness after the disney plus shows i am way less excited and i i feel like doctor strange is going to be a sort of just cameo cameoing in his own movie, it sounds like with so many of the the rumors that of, of stuff they're going to be trying to sort of fit into that and everything, and you know that bums me out because I I really like Doctor Strange and I enjoyed the first movie a great deal, and I think uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was a was a great call to play Doctor Strange. So, and and this one, do you think he's just going to kill be killing a bunch of Kangs instead of a bunch of Dormammus? <laughs> Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Uh, <laughs> Gang, I've come for your head. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know what, what they're going to do, but I mean, we know that Kang is going to be in the next Ant-Man and Wasp movie, uh, the Quantum Mania one and, every, and everything like Fun. that. Yeah. I mean, it's a stupid ass title, but. I, sorry, I don't want Ant-Man. I, <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed both movies, you know, to varying both? degrees. Yeah. I, I'm not saying that they were perfect by any you? stretch too much yeah see that's that's the canard and the just absolute bs thing that like somehow i've always hated the mcu uh i i just think that this this show is a and what we'll talk about later with black widow is is a prime example that there just has been a tonal shift uh in the mcu some of it's been gradual some of it has been sharp turns and it's just it's they are not being made the you know with the same tone the same thoughtfulness to storytelling as much as they want to shoehorn in their signature comedy and just their reliance on that and punctuating every scene with a joke and undermining their own characters and their own story like they've done in loki with the infinity stones and with karen loki last episode saying oh yeah super believable and stuff like that i just I don't I don't go to laugh and I don't go to laugh at it. You know, I'm a comic book fan. I'm a, I'm a Marvel fan. I'm a DC fan. I'm a fan of these characters. And, and I and I don't go for them to be sort of laughed at, you know, like a, a, a one liner here and there is fine. Everything has its time and place. But if, if you're telling me that tonally, both of humor and just their storytelling, if those if you don't think that those beats have changed in the MCU, I, I don't know what to tell you. Rewatch, go rewatch uh, Winter Soldier. Go rewatch Iron Man One. Rewatch the first Avengers movie. There are elements of all of that in there, and they're not perfect either. But the the quality to me, light years, light years ahead of of what they were doing there. I just I look at this Loki series, and not once did I feel like we had the sort of Machiavellian trickster Norse god of mischief in this show. They they said that they plucked a character moments after he took on the entire Avengers. Uh, and all we got was this sniveling little weakling worm that was just completely reliant on the, on those around him and, and wasn't at all this, this bastion of MCU villainry that he has been propped up to be for years. And then that's what I take away from the, from this Loki show was that it was just a chipping away at, at what has been sort of part of the MCU legacy. Everybody espoused just how great a villain Loki was and what a great character. This show undid so much of that with just a terrible portrayal. He carried himself completely differently, how he spoke, how he acted, uh, his, his inability to be that Machiavellian god of mischief. It was awful. I gotta say, I... I agree, and partially, however, I do believe that they broke him down to what he became in a reasonable way. How? You, he comes from New York. His All of his power is stemming from one of the, one of the stones. All, all of his power, powers don't stem from the stones. But what he was basing ta his takeover on. Sure, was. that was that that was a part of it. But remember, he gave up his staff to the Avengers and willfully got caught. He when he was in the he still has powers be, beyond the Infinity Stone. He's Loki. He's an Asgardian for for crying out loud. He's super strong. He's got great, you know, reflexes and all and all the all that crazy stuff. Durability. He's a, he's a super villain for crying out loud. He's got a, he's got the whole gamut. But if his magic doesn't work somewhere. Yeah, okay, but the, does that – but he at times during the show, for the vast majority of the show, had the ability to use his powers. Some of it. Not not in the TVA where he was at the very beginning. At the first they, episode, yes. And right. then in episode two, he escaped. He and, escaped. And, and if you go back to our talking about the show, I thought episode two was probably the peak of it, and it was downhill after that. But by episode two when he could – he has been broken. How is he broken? When they say that these things are paperweights, everything that he knows <sighs> is all powerful. What is there? 
first of all, you're going to use the paperweight argument as a positive. I it's for his character development in this. Yes, it's completely dumping on everything that had come before it it is it is chopping off your nose to spite your face it it is a, this lazy writer technique that in order for our big bad to be looked at as menacing and powerful we have to completely bury what came before it as just child's play in order for us to make this big bad for you to care about him we have to make you believe there's something more it doesn't necessarily have to be more powerful. Why can't it, it be? A, be. Why, why? But it, but also, it's bad storytelling to then undermine what you just spent ten years telling me was powerful, and that they're just paperweights. Why can't this just be another thing that is also powerful? They didn't get involved because that's just the way it was supposed to be in the timeline. There, it, it, you know, like I would watch a Captain America movie where he takes on the Serpent Society, even though I watch Captain America go toe to toe with Thanos. Not everything has to get leveled up because eventually you run out of places to go. Mm-hmm. Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom would be a vastly greater and more entertaining villain for me to watch than Galactus. Even though Galactus oh, is the eater 100%. of worlds and more powerful, but Galactus is more powerful. That must mean better. Must mean more investment from the fans. More fear. Absolutely not. But I think that's the good thing about Kang is that he does have. That I would rather very... have Doctor Doom than Kang. I won't argue that. I think that's a good point. I mean, uh, I, and I think they could go there in the next phase and it would be a very good move. And just to prove that you don't have to go bigger, more powerful. Um, but if you get good writing, good, <clears throat> you know, if you can bring that into it and get a, finally a good Dr. Doom, that'd be much better than a Galactus or something like that. You yeah, know, I guess my, but that's my overall point is that the, the but idea I think of, Kang of can tri- be that. trivializing the infinity stones to try and pump up a lesser known character and a lesser known organization. That is the TVA is a very short sighted, very lazy, uh, very just piss poor move by the writers. It's bad storytelling and it. And it undermines it undermines the journey that we all went on as fans th- through Endgame, you know, which which I still hold, you know, very dear in my heart with all of you nerds. I was just reminiscing the other day about the Avengers movie Don't you marathon. Try to bring them the into first this. one. Oh, absolutely! Don't you try to bring them into this. Don't try again. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't uh, there with you, everyone. I was. I like. I everything was with there you. with you. He hated it all. I didn't hate it all. I loved it. I, you're the one that was <laughs> crapping on Captain America. Well, yeah, he's he's terrible. He's bad writer. Yeah, because you no, absolutely not. Go back and watch the first Avenger movie. I mean, Captain I America. I did three days ago. Tremendous. I did. It Tremendous. Was awful. <laughs> Tremendous. You're an idiot. You're an absolute clown <laughs> shoe. Yeah, go ahead. Speak. Speak on that. So you hate the first Avenger, but you love this Loki show. What an absolute no. ass hat you are. I would absolutely. I actually put these on the same level. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I, so I, I didn't hate it. I gave it like a seventy percent. <laughs> uh, so the how about the kiss, Davis? How about the big emotional kiss? And how about the really after all this time? That's what you think of me after all this time? What time? <laughs> <laughs> a millennia, right? I don't know how long they were. No, Loki and Karen, Loki. <laughs> no, I know, I know, but they're traveling in between. Who cares? Time, you know? I know, bitch. I know. <laughs> that is stupid. It's been like three days. Give uh, me a break after all this coming, time. Coming, after all this time. I'm sorry. That's coming from a man that guy. falls in love in 48 hours, you should know better. <laughs> I react appropriately. <laughs> and, you and should know is, better. You is, <laughs> Listen. Impu- like low blow impugning the one single uh, guy on the show. No. You know? Hey, I love you, my buddy. I, I, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't you fall do hard. That. I wouldn't. You do, yeah. fall. You fall hard. I'm not just as hard Loki. as Loki. I'm not you're, a you're Loki. That's what we're doing. You're a Loki now. Well, I mean, I would dabble with Jeff. I will grant you that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you as well, I assume. Uh, but no, uh, I'm not a supervillain. 
it, it's completely after all this time and then a kiss big indiana jones swell of music and everything like that and then off you go to the the parallel universe and i'm gonna kill shitty kang which which is very ironic i was realizing and i was reading uh that they've switched now once she did that and they've realized what just happened is that she can no longer um uh, no he can no longer trust anyone and they just kind of yeah, switched just from what sitting there <laughs> but, but they, they've completely switched now <laughs> nobody was crying he was when he was sitting there like a uh, bitch he was he was, was like, gauging was it all super villain he wasn't. He knows it. <laughs> it was awful. Complete crap. <laughs> I will say, I I felt nothing with the kiss. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I don't well, need. I, mean, I don't, I don't need so, this. <laughs> so good for you. You're not into like no. var- variant cest, whatever sort of weird. No, no, no. no. I'm like, definitely down for that. Mm. Okay. That that's a that's a new probably favorite online now that people will probably be looking for that quite heavily i would assume yeah uh but Wait for the you know, loki porn parody folks i <laughs> bet you'll have better writing than the disney plus series. but you're me in the opposite gender i can't do this this is wrong so you'll get a lot and then, of that and then like karen on. loki gets stuck in a washing machine <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah no it's I, I i didn't feel much for that but i i did like the majority of the dialogue with kang in that scene and I yeah and, vision, and that's going to be one of those agree to disagree things i thought him hopping around like a boob was stupid but if you like it that's fine yeah loved it this his first words this is wild wow wild he who <laughs> he remains was, that's creepy i like he it. was he was channeling his own Wilson. He was, you know, they were on set together. Like, yeah. hey, osmosis. How, how do you do every role you do? Because I just need this for this one Kang role, and then I'll go real. So, Thank well, you, like, Owen. Wilson, like, every time before the camera start rolling, I break my nose again. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Black Widow style, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> which we'll get to. Nice tease ahead there. <laughs> oh, let's see. Anything else that we, that we need to need to hit on here? Oh, uh, in terms of also just not feeling it, like the the side characters in this show, like no matter, I think we can all agree. Even though I think Karen Loki was completely underwhelming, there's no doubt that you know her and variant Loki are the leads, or our Loki, I suppose. Uh, Mobius and Renslayer's little interplay felt zero this episode even how he returned was just like it's like surprise i'm back one man's voids another person's piece of cake yeah well one man's great show is another disney plus piece of shit <laughs> uh yeah his his lines fell pretty bad and uh, inter- I, I, inter- I'm talking I, about the interaction I, between the two characters the relationship no, that I, we are supposed to buy into yeah no I, I get that and they were him, they, yeah. They tried to build that up a bit, and it just and they it, failed. It, it they failed. Work. Yeah. Yes. They work. failed. Oh, I, 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 are we supposed to care about him uh, standing with Officer Fatty too at the end? No. Nobody cares. I'm surprised <laughs> we didn't bring back a uh, gut the fish guy. Thank Ooh. God they didn't. By the way, the guy in the first episode, he's like, "What's a fish?" <laughs> yeah. I thought they were gonna lean on him all season. So dude, I did too. So you know, thank my lucky stars that they did that. It was just that. we got miss minutes, and oh my, when when she was in the Citadel at the end, I was like, oh god, please, please don't tell me she's somehow the big bad. Please don't be. Please don't do that. I'll never well, hear the end of it. She kind of was. From... I mean, she was the agent no. of Kang. No, I, I know, but I was like, oh god, I will never hear the end of this from Jay. Listen, I cannot. <laughs> I can't. Back this. I, I can't. I can't defend the show anymore if she is somehow the big. Bad. 
Oh, I love it. I have. I, uh, well, you know, it's funny. Miss Minutes, which, by the way, for, in, in terms of visual effects and everything like that, I love Miss Minutes. And, I, and I've been consistent about that. I did not need her popping up at this very serious sit meal. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the end of time. I, I don't know. Just because even, they even ruined Miss Minutes for me by the end of this show. They only had <laughs> six episodes to do it. I loved her last line, though. It was, you know, we, I think it was, they said, uh, Sylvia or Loki said, you know, no, we control Karen Loki, our, please. Karen Loki. Uh, we control our free will. And she goes, well, good luck with that. And just go dissipates away. The door opens. And how it was delivered, it was just perfect. No. It just was just ominous. And <laughs> yeah, ominous from a Roger Rabbit clock character. Uh, yeah, you're you're talking to a guy that loves Roger Rabbit. I love Roger loves Rabbit Jurassic, too. Loves Jurassic Park, and it so was just do a combo, I. Yes, combo yes. of those two. Yeah, I, yeah, I I'm insisting about talking about how I like Miss Minutes, and as much as I hate this show, whatever Comic Con exclusive Miss Minutes little desk paperweight whatever they're gonna make, I'm kind of tempted to get it. I like this. <laughs> the one thing I can take away from this is show there, is there a Comic Con at Home toy coming out next week? Miss Minutes? Uh, maybe. maybe I don't know. The dumpster fire toy apparently was a Loki exclusive, and we didn't even know it. Uh, but season two, let's let's wrap things up here. Uh, season two, your thoughts, feelings, emotions, expectations. I think you are going to be. This is my prediction. Don't, don't, don't fucking no, come for this me. Is, no, it's my prediction. No this is my prediction. I'm going to. I think. Watching. I think you are going to turn around in season two because i think they are going to focus as loki as the protagonist here and we we are going to get a more i want uh, loki as my antagonist well no no no, no. you're, you're <laughs> gonna get your anti-hero <laughs> to me, see and i guess this is where i'll let you finish but i like loki as a villain but continue yeah no you're gonna get your anti-hero protagonist more so in season two i think because this was it was more focused on a Karen Sylvie story. Karen Loki. Yeah. Karen Loki. So mm -hmm. but I, I think season two is gonna be much different. I think it's gonna be much more anti hero Loki focused. God, I really so. wish that Miss Minutes was the big bad. I would love for you <laughs> to fucking tuck Talk. tail and come in here tonight. <laughs> Talking about eating crow, that that would do it. God, you'd be eating something worse than crow, my friend. Let me tell you. <laughs> me tell I, you I, I, I would have showed up. I would have showed up tonight. I can tell you David, that much. You're just, you're just not on the show ever again. <laughs> I'm well, sick. that means that means the end of Loki because we're the only two ones that watch it on the show. <laughs> yeah. And again, I do it for you, Nerdosphere, so you don't have to. <laughs> don't watch the show. It's crap. He does it so he can shit on all of you that like it. No, that's not why I do. Yeah, and I, I, I love, I love that. Too. I've been told by multiple people, let people enjoy things. I do, but you're listening to this show, and I fucking did it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it for you, and I <laughs> endured. Yeah, look, see, Too yeah. bullshit. <laughs> I made it through. I waited through the muck and mire, so you didn't have to. Don't watch. That's why. This that's why shit. he's so angry. Everyone is because he does watch this stuff for you. <laughs> I do. I it, suffer. He, I suffer for you, Neurosphere, <laughs> and you reward me with your ire. <laughs> he thinks he's like this nerd Jesus over here going <laughs> like sacrificing please, for you John all. John the Baptist, please. 